Hi, welcome to the madcenter.com. In the next series of uh, videos, we are going to be looking at the physics uh, exam paper, the physics paper 1, uh, AS 9702, the paper which appeared uh, in the June 2020 exams. Uh, this is paper 1 1. Okay, let me write paper 1 1. And we look at uh, the first few multiple choice questions. Let's start with number 1. What is a reasonable estimate of the kinetic energy of a car traveling at a speed of 30 meter per second? Kinetic energy, we know it is half mv squared. So let's say the average mass of a car, right? Average mass of a car, okay, of a car, let's say is uh, 2000 kg. Okay, so uh, V squared here, so this will be M, and V, v squared will be 30 times 30 is the 900, so this is about equals to 1000. So an estimate of your uh, kinetic energy will be half 2000 times 1000, which will be 1000 times 1000 will be uh, 10 to the power of 6. Therefore, your correct response will be 10 to the power of 6 joule. Yeah? Okay, question number 2. The frequency of vibration of a mass M supported by a spring with spring constant K is given by this equation. Yeah? C is a constant with no units. So F is frequency, uh, F the units will be 1 over, okay, 1 over seconds. Okay, this is, uh, time is measured in seconds, okay. So I just use 1 over S. Uh, you can also write it as S to the power of minus 1. Okay, uh, what else? Mass, you know, is kilogram, okay, measured in kilogram. A spring constant is force per meter, so it will be force per meter. So we can write it as uh, force is kilogram meter per second squared over meter. So you'll get kilogram per second squared. Okay, great. So now we can fill it in. This one here, uh, frequency the units per second. And then I have C is fine, it's no units. And then M will be in kg, kilogram. So that's raised to the power of P. And then K is uh, force per unit meter. Uh, so that will be, like I've done here, we have kilogram second per second squared, and that's raised to Q. So now I have uh, kilogram using some indices, P plus Q, and my S here will be minus 2Q. Okay, that's what you see here. Great, so we are comparing what's on the left-hand side. So this one here, P plus Q must be equal to zero. Okay, and this one here is minus 2Q, this is minus one. So minus 2Q equals to minus one, Q equals to a half. So from here, P must be negative half. So P is negative half, Q is a half. Correct response, B. Okay, question number three. This is pretty easy. The power produced by a force moving an object given by the equation. Okay, work per unit time. Uh, work is force times displacement over time. Which quantities are scalars? and which are vectors yeah you know that uh, power and work you know they are scalars straight away you can go to correct response b yeah you know that uh, power and uh, uh, power and uh, work they are scalar quantities or the other way of looking at it 
is you know that force and displacement, okay, force and displacement, you know they are vector quantities, so you know the correct response must be B. Question number four, a cathode ray oscilloscope displays a square wave as shown. The time base setting is 0.2 millisecond per division. What is the frequency of the square wave? So to find the frequency, we will use 1 over the period. The period here, let's count the number of squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 squares. So one square we have got, uh, or rather one division if you like, is 0.2 milliseconds. So the period will be 6, let me write it here, divisions, 6 times, oh, excuse me, 0.2 will be 1.2 milliseconds. Okay. So the frequency will be 1 over 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And then you will get 833 hertz. And therefore your correct response will be B. Okay, question number 5. Uh, measurement is taken correctly but with a ruler at a significantly higher temperature than that at which the ruler was calibrated. So... The higher temperature here, let me finish the question. The higher temperature causes the ruler to expand. What describes the effect on the measurement caused by the higher temperature and how the measurement may be improved? Okay, you can see that we are taking measurements by a uh, defective uh, measuring instrument. Okay, therefore we know we're going to have systematic error. Okay, and uh, systematic error and uh, we are looking at... Uh, Correct response D, the measurement will be subject to systematic error because we have a faulty measuring instrument. Okay, the systematic error is when you have errors that are consistent and repeatable. Okay, the measurement can be made more precise by taking the average of several repeated measurements. Yeah, okay, the uh, I'm sure you all know the difference between precision and accuracy. Yeah, precision is when the measurements are all close to one another. Okay, accuracy is when the measurements are close to the true value. Correct response will be D.